Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel from Tech. And this morning on a given Wednesday, we're talking with Tom Yamachika. We're talking tax with Tom. And it's a very interesting morning to talk about tax. Hi, Tom. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Jay. Great, great to be here. You know, um, we've often said uh, you and the Tax Foundation of Hawaii and me and wherever I've been is uh, we'd be better off if the legislature were not in session. They're taking off the old the old quote, uh, no man's life uh, or what is it, life or no man's life or property is safe while the legislature is in session. It's a joke. However, now we have our wishes is, uh, is satisfied. The legislature is not in session. It just dropped off a cliff, what, yesterday, day before? So uh, <clears throat> here we are without a legislative session in the middle and as a result of the corona crisis. What do you make of it, Tom? Uh, it's unprecedented. We, have, we haven't seen anything like this before. And it's not just the legislature either. Um, the uh, Department of Tax has come out and said, oh, we're, we're going to be closing for business. Um, you know, you can call us, but don't come in because our offices are, are not open to the public anymore. Uh, that was effective today. So it's uh, an interesting, brave new world we have here, uh, at least for the time being. Yeah, well, uh, while you're talking about the Department of Tax, I mean, they do have the certain power, the power of not requiring, um, you know, people to file by the statutory deadlines. And I guess they have, uh, they have exercised that power and they have told people they don't have to file by the statutory deadlines. What's the situation there? No, it's the opposite. Um, while, the, while the feds have told people uh, that, you know, you don't have to file by the statutory deadlines, uh, the state tax office is telling people uh, that we're, we have all the deadlines in place, nothing's changed. You know, go, go do business as usual when, when the world is not as usual. Oh, uh, so you have to file, that. and that's so. Uh, what April fifteenth? We we have to file by what is it? April fifteenth? Uh, April twentieth. Thank you. Right, five days after the federal. That's so right. there's no change. And, there's um, no change in that. No change. Uh, the HSCPA, the Hawaii Society of CPAs, I know, uh, has sent the department a request uh, to give people breaks on the you know, deadlines and filing payment and stuff like that. So far, uh, there has been nothing, uh, you know, no action on that request, but the announcement uh, that came out both yesterday and today uh, basically says we're not moving any deadlines, uh, which, which kind of makes sense because the you know, state government has to run too and they need their money. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they can't spend money like the feds can. So they need, they need the money to keep coming in. Or they're going to uh, be in a bigger bind than they are now. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, interesting, though, that um, does, does the State Department of Taxation, in the absence of a, an active legislature, does the State Department of Taxation have the power to extend those deadlines? Uh, Obviously, they can't you know, vary what's been put in the statute, but what they can do is they're going to, they can say, well, you know, uh, if you file a few days late, we won't, you know, we'll look the other way. I mean, um, law enforcement agencies in general can do that. They can do that, too. So effectively, practically, they do have the power and they can you know, look away for a few days or a few weeks or whatever, whatever delay. Yeah, they yeah, decide on. Okay, and but as you say, the state the state is um the state needs the money more immediately, and the state will have a more immediate burden. Um, except what I what I don't know is exactly what that burden is and how it's changed because of the coronavirus. The state was contemplating, wasn't it? It was contemplating benefits to uh, employees, employers, and the like uh, because they're working from home and not working at all. Uh, but all that seemed to stop cold. Is, what, what happened to all those things that were being considered? Uh, we don't know. Uh, the legislature is out of session, so they're not talking about that uh, in, in legislative session. The, uh, the tax department 
obviously has some power to change the rules a little bit, but so far they haven't exercised that power. So we really don't know what's going on. Um, you know, to be fair, this is just the first of you know many days of this change situation. So uh, answers may not be forthcoming for a little while. You know, once they kind of huddle internally and figure out what to do. Yeah. Yeah, we hope to talk to Ron Kochi and other legislators about you know what their plan is because although the legislature is not in session, there's a lot of uh, the leadership is still in the square building trying to figure out what to do. I you guess know, there's, all the there's, legislators are, are still um, at their offices. Uh, they're, you know, they're, because they are trying to avoid large public gatherings, they're not they're not having floor sessions and they're not having uh, committee hearings, uh, which normally would happen otherwise um and that's where we're at you know fact, if the I, continues, uh, this uh this friday would be a particularly eventful deadline because it would be uh the deadline for i, I believe second lateral which is what is the time that bills have to be in their final committee on the other side uh from which they originated but right now, uh, the, the deadline's up in the air. I'll say. I mean, they, they, they're not going to be able to pass even, you know, the most rudimentary legislation without without coming back for a special session or resuming the session they just recessed. Um, maybe they intend to wait. Maybe they're going to wait till April or May and uh, put it off when, when things cool off, although nobody really knows when things will cool off. Um, yeah, I mean, typically... Um, uh, infection rates follow a bell curve, so I think they're just kind of waiting for the uh, uh, for the, for the infection to kind of turn the corner uh, before they start contemplating public sessions again. And no, nobody uh, really knows when that's going to be at this point. Oh, and um, it's it's risky business because it's like um, that first um, retro thing in China <clears throat> where they sent everybody back to work. Um, but it was like maybe a little too early, and then you had a second wave of, of the virus. I think that may be resolved now, um, but you always risk that if you go too early and you don't you don't know if it's too early, uh, and then you wind up having a reinfection. So uh, right. people are going to be. I think they're going to be very conservative about that. So yeah, is there any well, reason? Should... Go ahead. No, yeah, as, as well they should be. Is there any reason why the legislature cannot vote by remote? Well, they, they, they can. Um, uh, in some hearings, I think last year, they were uh, experimenting with um, distance technology. But that was only with you know, maybe one or two people calling in from neighbor islands. Uh, if, if, they, if they have, like, you know, 50 or 100 people trying to jack into a particular hearing uh, that may present a, you know, <laughs> and, uh, a very different logistical challenge. You know, in a crunch, <clears throat> I don't, in a crunch, I don't, this is a, a tech question, but uh, in a crunch, I don't, I don't think you have to have a video um, to do a legislative meeting. I'm, I'm not sure what the law is, but um, you can do conference calls and indeed uh, Wall Street and large Business organizations do conference calls all the time. Large organizations in general, including including governmental organizations, have conference calls. They all get on the line. They identify themselves. They they make their statement, and I suppose also then you can have a vote the same way um, by audio only. Um, I don't know if this, if this requires a statute or maybe a proclamation, something. But it seems to me there's no reason why any legislative body these days. Knowing what we know about coronavirus uh, doesn't move to that kind of model. Uh, in the future, this may happen again. Some say it will happen again, and we'll all be mm, quarantined or um, self-quarantined. Um, and we, we cannot function uh, legally unless we have a meeting. And the meeting could be audio or video and audio, just like you and me here today. Um, is that been discussed? Is that, is that likely to come about? I don't know if it's been discussed. I mean, it's certainly a possibility, like you mentioned. Um, but I have heard nobody talk about that as an alternative to 
doing legislative hearings. It, it was just, you know, a reso gets passed, uh, you know, legislative resolution, uh, the, uh, the Capitol basically shuts down and press releases come out saying, okay, all these hearings have been canceled um, to at least in theory, start up again once the uh, once the general session is going again, uh, and that is going to be decided upon by um, the president of the Senate and the Speaker of the House. Well, I just you know you and I were discussing this a couple of weeks ago, and we did not foresee in any way that there would be this sudden recess, um, and we were talking about um, you know tax increase bills. Um, talking about uh, oh various bills that affected uh, state fiscal policy. Uh, what I'd like to do is um, you know go back with you to that discussion and talk about which of those bills uh, should resurrect in the event the, um, the the legislature goes back into session later this spring. Um, which which ones would be the important ones now um, to deal with coronavirus and state fiscal um, challenges? Um, well, I mean, I can, I can speak to the tax increase bills that are now on the table. Um, I mean, certainly it doesn't take legislation to you know, manage the dollars that you have prudently. And, and we're hoping that the departments are going to be prudent and you know, spend, uh, you know, spend the money only when they have to, to achieve some good for you know, our state. Um, certainly there are, uh, there have been and still will be tax increase bills on the table. Uh, there's one to increase the income tax rate to 13% uh, for the highest income individuals. There's a bill to uh, add a so-called temporary surcharge to the general excise tax um, for a period of five years starting from 2031. Uh, you know, I, I don't believe that maybe either, but that's what, that's how the bill reads now. Uh, and there are a number of other revenue raises in, in the pot. Well, I'll take a and short break, Tom. Time. I'll take a short break, and I'd like to come back and talk with you about the kind of pickle we're in. Uh, that is the pickle where um, the president has said a lot of this falls on the states. Uh, where Hawaii uh, is is uh, out of session, um, and and where Hawaii has a constitutional provision uh, that allows for um, that you know you have to balance the budget session uh, provision, and at the same time, um, you know there are big expenses that we may have to belly up to to uh, help our people deal with the virus. So uh, let's take a short break, Tom. We'll be right back to address those things. Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii. More specifically, this is Talking Tax with Tom. That's Tom Yama, Yamachika of the uh, Hawaii Tax Foundation. So, uh, you know, we, we, we're in a bit of a pickle, aren't we? Because uh, the president, um, you know, whatever his plans with the trillion dollars, uh, I don't think that's going to help the state meet its obligations uh, and its needs to deal with its own citizens. This is um, a kind of a super federal situation, federalist situation, where it all falls on the states, at least in the short term. Um, and the state, Hawaii, has a balance of budget provision in the Constitution, um, so it can't, it can't really exceed its own budget. At the same time, the president said, if you want respirators, go buy them. It's your problem. Um, and that's not cheap. And there are other things just like that. So if we, and we don't, we don't have a session going, so we're really stuck, aren't we? We can't raise the money to do the things that have been laid at our doorstep 
We can't protect our population. We can't deal with a, with a lack of sufficient beds and medical equipment to deal with a, with a true outbreak uh, affecting people who are vulnerable. Uh, gee whiz, what a situation. Go ahead. That's even worse than that because uh, most of our government's revenue is tax revenue. Um, a lot of, you know, about half of that is general excise, which is based on business. Mm. So if you have uh, industry tanking uh, because people aren't visiting the islands anymore, um, at least in the, in the short term, you'll have tremendous downturns in the amount of tax revenue that, that gets collected. So uh, at the government level, people are still working. They need to get paid. Uh, they need to pay their rents and you know buy food and the, the things that you and I need to do. Um, but the source of the money for that is is, is not uh, you know up in question. So uh, what what's everybody going to do? Um, I I I hear uh, that the legislators are thinking of going to different industry groups and saying, hey, you know, can we get some concessions from you? Can we dial back some credits? Can we dial back some uh, to help this economy or help the state government um, and keep on functioning? I mean, is that um, kind of what you've been hearing as well? No, I haven't. I haven't heard anything on it yet. I, but I do see it as a huge problem, uh, and an insoluble problem. I mean, even the option you talked about about, you know, um, uh, visiting with business leaders and groups and asking them somehow to kick in, um, they're in trouble too. Uh, they're not flush. They're under underwater. A lot of them, and that will continue. I mean, when you realize, I mean, today, uh, the governor said. Um, he's discouraging people from visiting Hawaii for a 30-day period. Now, well, that you and I know that's not going to stick at 30 days. It's going to be more than that. Who knows how much? And, you know, that, that is like putting the pennies on the eyes of tourism. So our tourism has stopped and is stopped and will be stopped for a while. And as you said, you know, gross excise uh, is dependent on business. So you get all the secondary effect. I mean, it's an economics analysis. You get all these secondary effect where all the businesses have stopped. Nobody's earning anything. Nobody's paying or has to pay any uh, gross excise tax. And the government, which gets most of its money from gross excise tax, um, has no, you know, it has a tremendous reduction in receipts. At the same time, you know, our people are going to get sick, are sick now. They're going to be in hospital. The hospitals don't have the beds or the money to buy new beds, new respirators. And everyone will look to the state to fill in the gap. This is an impossible dilemma. I, mean, I don't know where the soft spots are. I can, I, and then we have the balance the budget thing. I suppose you can say, well, <clears throat> we're not going to follow the balance the budget thing. We're going to come back into session and we're going to vote you know, these benefits and, and soften it for everybody, including business and individuals. And we're going we're to save the state. But that, that's in violation of the Constitution. Um, so, wow. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, it's like they're coming in the windows, they're coming in the doors. Where do you, where do you go first to save the state? This is a really big problem, not only for the legislature, but for the governor and the administration in general and the tax office and you name it. This is, I mean, am I right? And maybe I'm overreacting here, Tom, but it looks to me like there's no easy legal solution um, to paying um, for things that we absolutely have to have to save our people. Yeah, I think we need to uh, all realize that this is not business as usual, uh, that you know, everybody's going to be asked to do a, a little bit more to, you know, help, help out because we're all hurting uh, or, or will be. And, um, you know, whether it's business, industry, government, government itself, um, you know, we, we're all going to have to adjust. Yeah. Because we are not going to have you know as much influx of outside um, spending as we've had in, in prior years. So where's the soft spot? Let me, as I have often done, let me make you governor for a moment. Uh, what would you do?
Well, I, I, I would, uh, and you know, and maybe this would this would cost me my job uh, the next election that comes up. But uh, I certainly endeavor to, uh, you know, suspend or, or shut down any non-essential programs. Um, we, we need to kind of make sure the dollars go where they're needed, and following the, you know, the greatest amount of need. Uh, the, the the stuff that is nice to have. Uh, can wait and should wait uh, until we have the resources to, uh, to fund those programs properly again. Uh, but in, in the in the short term, uh, everybody's going to be in a pinch, and we have to you know help each other out as as best we can, uh, and that's going to mean that everybody takes a little bit of pain. Yeah, or maybe more. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting idea. You know, yeah. you send government home. A lot of people have wanted to do that for a long time. You send government home and you don't pay them. You, you stop the payroll. You'd have to have, you'd have to have agreement so there isn't a big fuss about it, but um, you, you send them home. Well, yeah, and I mean, then you, so then you, we had some, some years ago um, when uh, Governor Lingle was uh, in power, uh, we had uh, an economic crisis back then and that's how we you know, solved it in the short term. Uh, we may be talking about Curlow Fridays or, or, you know, more than that, yeah. depending on how bad yeah. it is. Uh, oh, what about the, to... um, Already the Council of Economic Revenues has come back and said, oh, you know that, that growth uh, forecast that we, that we gave you a few months ago? Well, it, it ain't growth anymore, it's not. So, um, so you can't count on economic gains in the short term. Uh, and we really have to kind of kind of deal with, you know, staying put with what we have. Mm. Yeah, and and the uh, you hero report last Tuesday, um, you know, uh, projecting a ten percent uh, drop um, and a six thousand jobs lost in tourism, and we're having a show on the effects on tourism later today, with Keith Vieira, um, but uh, you know that they. They, um, they changed their mind overnight. And the following day on Wednesday, they said, oh, that wasn't conservative enough. It's going to be worse than what they predicted on Tuesday. So I think we have a situation where we chase our own numbers and we find that it's worse every time we look. So one of the possibility that strikes me, uh, something you said, is that suppose we go out to the public and to business and we say, look, um, you know, can we know we've extended, uh, or we may extend your tax deadline, but how about paying early? How about how about making a um, you know a, a larger payment to us, not a smaller one? How about doing that for old Lang Syne? How about doing that for the community? And you get credit later, and we'll pay you interest on any excess over the tax you you know determined to. Um, in the meantime, we need the money. Uh, could that be done, and would it work? Uh, it, it could be done. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if it would work. Uh, certainly, it would have to be looked at long and hard. Um, the anxiety I have about that is, uh, you know, once you go down that path, uh, it gets kind of hard to reverse. Uh, you know, people expect um, that and more and uh, and, and, and look for ways to make the, the pain continue, um, even though they, not, they might not be uh, calling it or putting it in those terms, but that's what the effect will be. Mm -hmm. What about, um, mm -hmm. that, and that makes me think, well, what about, what about borrowing? Uh, is borrowing a possibility here? Can they go into the bond market and borrow for what amounts to operating expenses? And they could go to the um, national or international bond market and and borrow money um, to do what has to be done to deal with the virus here in Hawaii? Is that a doable thing? Does that require, does that require a bill, require legislative action? Uh, or is there anybody around in, in the state government that can actually borrow like that? It's, it's possible to go out in the bond market. Um, bond prices have, have tanked as well. So it's going to be difficult. Uh, to get money anywhere. 
Um, and, and I think we have to be prepared for that. Uh, obviously, if we're uh, if prepared to pay enough in the way of interest, then, then we'll find some people who will be willing to loan us money. Uh, but again, it will come at a, it'll come at a price. Yeah, well, uh, probably a very high price because our our rating, uh, bond rating is not that good anyway. Uh, you know, we're not in all that. We were not even before this in all that good a shape in the bond market for, um, you know, as a as a, a class A, double, triple A kind of borrower. So yeah, I mean, kind of anyway. Of, of what Warren Buffett did um, when, uh, what's what's that big brokerage house in New York uh, went down at the, in, in the last um, account of downturn. Uh, Warren uh, basically said, look, you know, I got the cash, uh, I'll, I'll lend it to you, but you got to pay me 10%. And they, and they took it. I, I think it was Goldman Sachs. Mm -hmm. Goldman Sachs that, that had to do that. So maybe something like that is in the wings. Uh, maybe, maybe somebody's actually making phone calls about it right now. I think there's, I think there's going to be a crunch, and of course, it's always possible, lest we forget, and before we close the show, that the federal government will respect uh, David Ige's declaration of an emergency and uh, somehow uh, find some money for us and other states um, to help us through the crisis, to help our fiscal policy, to help us uh, survive. Um, you know, in a time when the costs are so astronomically more than we ever expected. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm hoping that the federal government will come, will come uh, through. Uh, we'll, we have to see what Congress does right now. Uh, I think it's stuck. Uh, the Senate under Mitch McConnell hasn't voted on the House bills. And uh, we may not see a result even on the initial raft of legislation that's been proposed for several days or more. And that's really tragic. So last question, Tom. <clears throat> At this point, Given this crisis, given all the issues we talked about, would you, as governor, encourage the legislature to go back in session and somehow manage to do legislative action to deal with things? Well, I think so, yes. Um, I, I, would, I would, as much as possible, uh, want our government at least to put, uh, you know, put, put a, its best pace forward and and uh, you know, once it's safe to do so, uh, and once the appropriate means can be devised, like you know, conference calls or whatever, uh, get about its business because um, you know a lot of people depend on government to do its thing when it, when it said it was going to do it, uh, and we need to uh, basically not roll over and play dead. We need to to put up a, an, an active fight uh, to save our all, all of our livelihoods. Yeah. It's one thing to close business down. It's another thing to close government down when government has to help us all survive. And as powerful as the uh, governor and all governors uh, have become, they can't do it alone. They need, they need the support of the legislature for funding and policy. Well, Tom Yamachika, we find ourselves in interesting times. I would like to do this again with you soon. Uh, so we can find out what happened in this uh, incredible story in which we are now immersed. But in the meantime, only one piece of advice, Tom, wash your hands. <laughs> you too, man. <laughs> Take care. Aloha. Aloha.